As much as I enjoyed making my last video, I've come to realize that one just sucks and I need to make a new one. Okay, so it doesn't really suck. It, there's just some information that I didn't include uh, that looking back at it, I probably should have. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video, in it I compared the encoding times in Handbrake using NVIDIA, NVENC, Intel QuickSync, and AMD VCE. The thing that I left out of that video was the final output file sizes using uh, all of the different video encoders. The main reason that I didn't include them was because the thing I was most interested in at the time was the time savings that GPU encoding offers over CPU encoding. After posting that video live though, I had a couple people ask me about the difference in the final file sizes output by each encoding method. This is something that I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to while I was making that video because I was just too excited by how much quicker I was going to be able to compress digital backup copies of my movie collection. These questions got me wondering though, is there a difference in the final output file sizes between NVIDIA NVENC, Intel QuickSync, and AMD VCE? Spoiler alert, uh, there is a difference, but I didn't know just how much of a difference there was. As soon as I decided that I needed to make this video, I was really wishing that I hadn't deleted all the files I'd output while making my last video because it meant that I needed to rerun all the tests I'd done before, and there's a handful of them that had taken a really long time to complete. Uh, CPU encoding, for example, takes hours. And yeah, I, I didn't just send them to the recycle bin. I had completely deleted them. So anyway, I, I then had to spend the next couple of days running all of my encoding tests over again. Just like in my previous video, I used my gaming slash video editing rig, which has a Ryzen 9 3900X and RTX 2070 Super, uh, and my laptop, which is sporting an i7-8750H and GTX 1050Ti, to test both NVIDIA NVENC and Intel QuickSync. For AMD VCE encoding, I had to switch to using my brother-in-law's computer, uh, which is rocking an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and a Radeon RX 5700 XT, because the RX 570 I used in my previous video, I gave away to one of my subscribers uh, named Daniel, uh, who won it as part of the channel's 15,000 subscriber giveaway. First up, I ripped a DVD copy of the movie Dodgeball, which is a 1 hour and 32 minute long movie, using Make MKV, which produced a 4.63 gigabyte MKV file. I then dropped that file into Handbrake to encode, and here's what I found. Using the SuperHQ 480p 30 surround preset in Handbrake, uh, in my previous video, NVIDIA NVE and C delivered the fastest encoding times of all the encoders. Uh, however, it is apparent that AMD has really stepped up their game when it comes to their H.265 encoder on their Navi GPU architecture. Uh, the Polaris-based RX 570 was significantly slower than both my Turing-based RTX 2070 Super and my Pascal-based GTX 1050 Ti. But this time around, when using the Navi-based 5700 XT, the AMD VCE H.265 codec was the fastest one of all. So, good job AMD on speeding things up. When you look at the final output file sizes though, we see that VCE actually comes in last place when it comes to compression. Well, at least when it comes to the handbrake presets that I'm using. Doing all of my tests, I found that, uh, generally speaking, the faster the encoder was, the larger the final output file size also was. Uh, as you can see in this chart, uh, when using the H.265 codec, uh, that the smaller the final completed file, the longer that encoder took to do the job. Uh, if you look over at the H.264 column, this doesn't quite remain true though. Uh, as I've been doing some research for this video, I've come across some sources uh, complaining about AMD's H.264 encoder, um, as it hasn't been particularly good for quite some time, and there appears to be no improvement with their Navi GPUs. 
As you can see here, they really have some work to do. It was quick, uh, only being beat out by my 2070 Super, but it output an unacceptably large, well, at least in my opinion, 4.22 gigabyte MP4. The MKV file I started with was 4.63 gigabytes. So yeah, it's almost like, what was the point of spending the time to um, compress the file? Switching over to the blue team, uh, Intel QuickSync delivered the best performance uh, when you take both speed and compression into account. Using both H.264 and H.265, it was slower than Nvidia and AMD. However, QuickSync offered better compression than both the red team and the green team in my testing. So I'm feeling like when it comes to backing up DVDs, if you're looking for better speed than CPU encoding and more compression than AMD and Nvidia can muster, QuickSync is the best option. That being said, if you're looking to maximize the amount of content you can fit onto your home media server, the option that delivers the smallest files is CPU encoding. Yes, it takes significantly longer, but if you're looking for the maximum amount of compression, uh, GPU encoding just isn't able to push things down as small. You can speed up the encoding process with a CPU by having a higher core count or more powerful CPU. Um, but obviously those kinds of CPUs don't really come cheap. After encoding the DVD rip of Dodgeball 14 different times, I switched over to a Blu-ray rip of the movie Shazam. Uh, make MKV output a 29.2 gigabyte MKV file, which I then dropped into Handbrake. Now Shazam is a 2 hour and 12 minute movie, and in case you didn't know, uh, yes, the longer a movie is, the longer it takes to encode. Not to mention, this is a 1080p Blu-ray rip, um, and there's way more data to work with, so encoding times are slower than they are for DVDs, uh, just in case you weren't aware of that, uh, which you probably are, so I probably didn't even need to say this. For the tests you're about to see, I use the HQ 1080p 30 surround preset in Handbrake, and things are very much in line with what we saw in the DVD encode tests. Once again, using the H.265 codec, AMD VCE on the 5700 XT delivered the fastest time. But also, once again, uh, delivered the largest final file size. Uh, using H.264, it was the second fastest, uh, beating out my laptop's 1050 Ti by just over four minutes, but it also output the largest file of all of the H.264 encoders. My RTX 2070 Super, for example, completed the H.264 encode in about half the time of the 5700 XT and output a nearly 3 gigabyte smaller file. So it's pretty obvious that Nvidia has better support for H.264. Other than being second to AMD with the H.265 codec, Nvidia NVENC delivered the fastest results in all of my tests, which is great. But when you compare the final output file sizes, NVENC files are between 30% and 45% larger than what CPU encoding delivers. So people that are looking to compress their files as small as possible probably aren't going to be happy with using NVIDIA NVENC. Intel QuickSync once again showed it isn't necessarily the fastest, but it does deliver smaller file sizes than either NVIDIA or AMD, and gets somewhat close to what CPU encoding can do. However, CPU encoding does reign supreme when you're looking for the absolute most amount of compression you can get with Handbrake. But if you're looking for the best of both worlds, uh, small file sizes and fast encode times, well, fast compared to CPU encode times, then Intel QuickSync appears to be the best choice. So yeah, the uh, statement that I made at the end of my last video, in my opinion, there is no reason to use CPU encoding any longer. Uh, I no longer fully agree with that. I mean, 
if you're not concerned with compressing your digital backups down as small as possible and just want to speed up the process, uh, then yes, GPU encoding is definitely the way to go. Uh, however, if maximizing the amount of stuff you store on your NAS or home media server is your primary goal, uh, then CPU encoding is going to net you the absolute smallest files and therefore the most content that you can then store. Now, I only tested two presets in Handbrake for this video, uh, one for DVDs and one for Blu-rays, so this isn't like a really comprehensive uh, test of like everything. You can of course use lower quality presets than I used or manually adjust settings and decrease file sizes and decrease encode times um, from what I show in this video. Um, but that is really all up to how much time you want to spend dialing in settings to a point that you are happy with. You know, where you get video quality you like, uh, encode times that are fast enough, and file sizes that you're happy with. My hope is this video simply provided you with information that will be useful to you and help you decide what type of encoding you want to use when backing up your physical media or even uh, what hardware that you may want to purchase to do your backups with. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. I'm sure you've watched enough YouTube and have heard the the like, share, comment, and subscribe spiel many, many times before. If you would like to help me continue making videos like this one, uh, please check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description where you can purchase things like the 2070 Super and 5700 XT, which I featured in this video. I hope you have a great day and uh, we'll catch you later. Bye.